Hello friends, here we are at this lecture number 16th of microbiology lecture series and in this lecture we want to talk about the chemotherapeutic agents that means the antibiotics and the mode of action of different types of antibiotics so in this particular video we want to talk about the different types of antibiotics their antibiotic classification and we want to know how they are classified and uh, their broad mode of action Things that we want to know in this particular chapter is listed in this slide. We are going to compare penicillin, cephalosporin and vancomycin all of them together and how they differ with one another. We are going to briefly explain the modes of uh, action of some antifungal drug. We explain the mode of action of some antiviral drugs. We explain the mode of action of some antiprotozoan and antihelminthic drugs. Describe Kirby Bauer test and how exactly we are going to use Kirby Bauer table to, to analyze the test. Describe the mechanism of drug resistance among uh, microbes. We are going to describe the history of chemotherapy, name uh, of the microbes, and the proceed produce uh, any microbes that produce antibiotics. Describe the problems of chemotherapy for viral, fungal, and protozoal and helminthic infections. And we are also going to talk about some uh, definitions like therapeutic index, antibiotic activity spectrum, bacteriostatic, bactericidal and so on. We also want to talk about uh, like five modes of action of antimicrobial drugs and describe the mechanism of action of penicillin and mechanism of resistance against penicillin type of drugs. So a lot of things. So let's begin with it. So antimicrobial drugs, and we know that this term chemotherapy means the use of drugs to treat a disease. Although nowadays chemotherapy is hardly used for, uh, you know, mostly widely used for marking the cancer treatment. But it's kind of any kind of drug treatment is a part of chemotherapy. Antimicrobial drugs interfere with the growth of the microbes with, within a host. So the host in this case is eukaryotes and the microbes are prokaryotes. So the drugs that we are designing are going to lie some adver effect, adverse effect on the prokaryotes but it will not do anything to eukaryotes. So antibiotic uh, is of biological origin produced by microbes inhibits other microbes. This is the normal antibiotic uh, and how antibiotic is, is there. But the chemo chemotherapeutic agent is synthetic chemical factors which is going to kill microorganisms. So uh, many newer antibiotics are developed which are chemically modified or chemically synthesized forms. So we are going to call them chemotherapeutic agent which are not uh, naturally isolated from uh, producing microbe. Okay? The history of chemotherapy goes back to 1910. Paul Enrich and uh, Erlwich okay, actually. And uh, he developed uh, what is known as the Salvarsan. Okay? which is uh, arsphenamine against syphilis in 1910. The concept of chemotherapy to treat microbe disease was born during this time of 1910. And then uh, at 1932, the sulfur drugs like sulfanilamide discovered, which is uh, always working against the gram-positive bacteria because gram-positive bacterial infections are the primary ones that we've identified and we start to cure them. Now, uh, the drugs developed against the gram-negative bacteria developed far later. Okay. In 1928, uh, Fleming discovered penicillin and that became one of the greatest trademark, uh, one of the greatest timestamp of the development of antibiotics. And then in 1940s, Howard Fulry and Ernst Chain performed uh, the first clinical trials of penicillin and it's established to be a medicine afterwards. So that's how uh, this whole chemotherapy started to act. And nowadays we cannot think of a single day without a uh, single day of treatment without uh, the involvement of chemotherapeutic agents or antibiotics. The features of antimicrobial drugs that they have, they have selective toxicity. That means drugs kill pathogens without damaging the host. And the reason behind the selective toxicity is that the drug uh, is against prokaryotes, which are microorganisms. But uh, we are eukaryotes, so it's not going to put any harm to us. Therapeutic index is the ratio between toxic dose and therapeutic dose. We simply measure them with LD50, lethal dose 50 and ED50. Now, LD50 is uh, the, the, the amount of antibiotic used, I mean, uh, responsible to kill 50% of the population. 
is known as the lethal dose 50 so 50 percent of population will be gone and the amount of antibiotic that you use for that is lethal dose and high therapeutic index means the drug is less less toxic high therapeutic index means we need to so ld50 is more so more and more ld50 greater ld50 means we need more antibiotic dosage to kill 50 percent of the hypothetical bacterial population or practical bacterial population to test so that means we need more drug to kill them so that means the toxicity is quite less and the lower ld50 means the toxicity of the drug is high antimicrobial action there are two types of antimicrobial action bacteriostatic and bactericidal bacteriostatic is going to slow down the growth of uh, microbes while bactericidal are going to kill the bacteria activity spectrum it can be either broad spectrum or narrow spectrum broad spectrum is when uh, the drug is being like used for the treatment against a vast range of uh, and like microorganism while narrow spectrum is when we use the drug for a very few specific microorganisms T tissue distribution metabolism and excretion and you know uh, the excretion like metabolism means not all the antibiotics are uh, ingested uh, at the same time frame a uh, few can be like uh, are stable more few are less stable few are unstable in acid few are unstable in in base and their half-life duration is also important and it's very important so that to understand their their pharmacokinetics so that we understand how exactly the antibiotic is going to go inside our body how our body is going to react against it and how our liver is going to process that antibiotic and at the end the product of the antibiotic should be released from the body with excretion the action of antimicrobial drugs can be summed up here in this particular picture and there are five uh, types of antimicrobial actions that are available we are going to see that in this picture the first one is inhibition of cell wall synthesis example of the drugs penicillin cephalosporins bac bacitracin vancomycin these are a part of the cell wall inhibitors they are going to pu put uh, holes in the cell wall and some of them are going to prevent the synthesis of the cell wall in the bacteria thus leading to the uh, leakage and death of the bacteria second type is inhibition of protein synthesis means translational inhibitors example chloramphenicol erythromycin tetracycline streptomycin these are the type of drugs that are going to uh, not directly killing the bacteria but it, it's kind of bacteriostatic because it's going to stop the protein synthesis sometimes it also kills the bacteria because it prevents the essential protein synthesis so these are protein synthesis inhibitors which can be classified as 30s inhibitors and 50s inhibitors separately and the third type is inhibition of nucleic acid replication and transcription example quinolones fluoroquinolones and then rifampine or rifampicin so these are the drugs which are going to destroy the dna which are going to uh, convert the the topoisomerases into uh, an ex endonuclease enzymes uh, and that's going to destroy their own dna so this these are going to kill the bacteria obviously fourth type of drugs are injury to plasma membrane and like example polymyxin b they are going to destroy the plasma membrane now the question is this plasma membrane destroyers are not that vast type because these are the ones which are rare and actually killing the i mean destroying the cell membrane is going to lead to obviously some effect but uh, some bacteria in fact in this case they have the cell wall outside so it's not going to directly kill the bacterial cell but you know again it's going to destabilize the charge and osmotic balance of the cell and that may lead to the death of the cell and the fifth type inhibition of synthesis of essential metabolites Meta metabolite preventing synthesis prevention or preventing in, uh, uh, antibiotics example sulfanilamide and trimethoprim these are the drugs which are going to prevent the synthesis of important metabolites inside the cell and that's going to prevent the cell to grow so if you begin with the protein synthesis inhibition antibiotic antibiotic that inhibits protein synthesis and those are you know as i said we have 50s inhibitors we have 30s inhibitors we have different drugs doing different sorts of action so here three different drugs are uh, listed chloramphenicol tetracyclines and streptomycin chloramphenicol binds to the 50s portion and inhibits the formation of peptide bonds between uh, the growing chain of the polypeptide and the new charged uh, amino acid i mean charged trna and the amino acid with the charged trna so this interaction is prevented so it's going to interact with the 50s portion chloramphenicol 
tetracycline interfere with attachment of tRNA to mRNA and forming the ribosome complex. So tRNA with mRNA, this interaction is misread by misread by the tetracycline is going to prevent the tetracycline to do this sort of action out there. Okay. And streptomycin changes the shape of 30th portion causing the code on mRNA to be read incorrectly. Again, misreading of the codon is, con is caused by the streptomycin. Tetracycline on the other hand interferes the attachment of tRNA with mRNA. But streptomycin uh, changes the shape of the 30th portion so that it cannot be recognized by, uh, I mean it cannot uh, recognize with uh, the interact with the mRNA and cannot read the mRNA codon properly. So these are all uh, the processes that prevents the protein synthesis and, and, and translation in, pro, uh, in, in prokaryotes. So I believe you understood the process of uh, this chemotherapeutic agents, you know, uh, the properties of these chemotherapeutic agents and how they are categorized and why there are so many types. Now from the next lecture onwards, we want to focus on each specific chemotherapeutic agent and we're going to see their mode of action in much more details. So please hit that subscribe button so that you can continue to receive the notification for our next video upload. And if you like this video, take a little second and hit that like button and share this video with your friends if you want them to learn that.